Congratulations, you're a vampire. Welcome to your second life. Things are about to get weird, forever. Some people can't handle the change, can't handle becoming a murderer who feeds on human blood. The change breaks people, brings out hidden aspects of their character that they never knew existed. It's a shock to understand that you don't have to die of sickness or old age, that the supernatural exists and that your religious leaders lie to you. Or that your atheism may not protect you from damnation. But not you. You're not one of those people. You've had enough bad experience that you know how to roll with the punches. You know that the world is many shades of grey instead of a black and white. You've chosen to accept a role as the hunter even if that means abandoning some of your mortal ethics. You might clinch to some aspects of your former goodness as a slave to the evil you have to do. That's fine. We all rationalize our choices. Especially the ones we're uncomfortable with. But the fact is, you need to kill in order to live. Hi there fellow roleplayers and game masters, my name is Mr. Tarask and today I want to talk about Stay Alive, another white genre book by Montico Games for the Cypher system. This one tackling horror. What kind of horror? Well, every kind of horror. Going from vampires to zombies to aliens to, I don't know, viruses, post-apocalyptic stuff, clown horror, asylum horror and every kind of horror you can think of, you sick in all seriousness, I'm going to contradict myself in this video real quickly because in my other reviews of these white books like Godforsaken, Claim the Sky, and then there's another one I have to pick really quickly, The Stars Are Fire, I always say that I don't get these books for their campaign setting. I always get them for the wonderful GM guides and toolboxes they are because that's what they are. They are a toolbox full of guidelines and new rules ideas in order to bring a certain genre into your game and to bring your game to towards a certain genre. Now with Stay Alive it's actually completely different because it is the campaign setting and the small playable campaign that goes along with it that actually interests me the most. So what I want to do in this video is kind of talk about what you get for your money when you get Stay Alive as a physical copy on your doorstep. But also after that I want to talk about what you don't get because there's two important things that you don't get in Stay Alive that's really important to state up front. Then I want to open the PDF and show you one or two things that I find really, really cool. So let's talk about the good stuff first. What you get is 224 pages of horror awesomeness together with, of course, the writing style of Montecoo Games, which is really cool. And then, of course, the cool artwork Montecoo Games uses in all of their books. This book is really, really good for people who want to play a horror campaign in any genre. Because the second thing I must say is there are three cipher shorts in here that tackle three different types of horror. The first one is a slasher horror adventure where you are camping out with some friends and you are a senior camper and there's high school students that you need to pay attention to but there's a guy with an axe basically murdering everybody. The second one puts people inside a haunted mansion and you need to find proof of it being a haunted mansion and you need to find an artifact of the owner in order to bring that back to the owner. The third one is a stereotypical zombie adventure where you're trapped inside of a hospital and it's filled with gut. Damn zombies! All of these shorts take about two pages of content in the book. Now don't worry about it only being two pages because if you compare that to 5th edition that's comparable to like four, five, maybe even six pages of 5th edition content. So if you tackle these adventures in a session it will probably take you one full session to tackle this adventure if you go deep enough and well enough into it. And if you're looking for the right monster or NPC to pit against your players in your horror campaign don't worry because this book like any other cypher system book has a bunch of new monsters for you to use like for example this really creepy and crawly creature that crawls like a snail and makes noises from its hands and claws and it's called a Yithian who were extinct in the past but now live in the future and now live in the minds of people in the in the present and they I don't know it's really really weird but you know what's not weird a human suit So yes, this book has three cipher shorts, it has a bunch of new creatures and a bunch of artifacts and ciphers. For example, there is one cipher in here which is basically a horrific eye that can, you can put and you can install it in your hand and suddenly you have like this realistic looking eye in your hand and you can use that to look around corners and stuff like that. 
But before all of that, the biggest chunk of this book, and I'm talking about pages 1 all the way up to pages 128, it is horror world building. It is all GM advice and toolkits and stuff you can use as a GM to build your horror campaign and your horror world. Even for somebody like me who is not used to playing or running horror, I can really find a lot of good stuff here because they talk about building your horror setting, what kind of um, stuff happens in certain genres of horror, there's consent in horror, there's plots, why and how, advice for running a horror game, there's horror genres, and there is an encyclopedia of horror mechanics. For every type of horror there is known to men, basically, there are mechanics. They're talking about like the last survivor, uh, viruses, zombies, um, there is stuff about running two characters at once, for example, but you're always like running one character at once, but you're switching between these characters characters depending on what the story which character the story needs so you're playing more like a Netflix series like Stranger Things and you're playing multiple characters but separately from each other there's all kinds of different mechanics you can use. there's even random rolling tables in here for if you want to run a horror campaign but you don't know what you want it to be about or whatever you just roll on a random rolling table you get your stuff you get the mechanics you need for that horror type of horror and you're good to go and the cool thing is for every genre they have their separate section for example this is for clown horror and they have this little thing here horror modules and they list the modules you can use in order to make this clown horror adventure that you're having uh, better for clown horror if that makes any sense at all for example they use the modules hysteria instant panic last survivor poor choices secret twist and unease these are all modules that are explained in the book and you can use in your campaign and all have a separate set of rules or guidelines or mechanics in order to make your game more interesting than just rolling dice and punching the crap out of people now a really important disclaimer before you buy this book or before you present this book to your players. Um, Sean K. Reynolds, the person who wrote this and his team did not shy away from it being really, really horror, like really out there. Your game, if you want to play it, should come with a disclaimer. Uh, before reading this, please tell yourself some of the subjects in here are really... <laughs> really out there and they're really true horror like um yeah there this there's a reason for there being a consent form and i don't even want to like mention some of the stuff here on youtube and i mean that in a good way i mean this is a true true horror book like old gods of appalachia for example being a true horror um podcast you can listen to that on spotify and it really talks about some serious stuff stay alive also really talks about some serious stuff after all it's just a game you're just having fun but yeah it, yeah it's 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 sick in a cool way now, before I want to talk about two things that you don't get with the book, I want to talk about one more thing that you get when you buy the physical book, which is this awesome poster map that you get in all of the wide books. Wait, all of the... Oh, shit. Oh, oh, all of the wide books, which is the cover of the book itself, which is really cool. If you buy a few frames, I still need to buy a few frames for all of these poster maps that I have and hang them around my studio. So you have the poster and then you have like from the uh, adventure or the campaign or something like that, you have a really cool uh, bit of artwork, which is so you can choose which one you uh, hang up against your wall or you put on the table or I don't know, you wipe your ass with for all I care. So what don't you get? I'm going to keep this very brief. You don't get this in any of the white books. First of all, you don't get the Cypher System rules. You need the Cypher System rule book in order to uh, start playing your horror game with the Cypher System and with the uh, toolboxes that are in here, the monsters that are in here and all of that stuff. Also, this book refers to the Cypher System rule book a lot for a lot of different IDs. And for example, if they suggest a monster somewhere, uh, they might suggest a monster from the Cypher System rule book. And it's the same with artifacts and rules modules and stuff like that one other thing that you don't get in stay alive is new foci new character descriptors and new character types because you don't need them what they do is for almost every genre especially for like the uh the adventures that are in here they talk about how you can reflavor the existing uh classes the existing types of the cypher system rule books reflavor them into a class or a type or whatever 
whatever you want to call it, for your game, for the type of horror you're playing. It's the same with a book like Godforsaken for fantasy. If you're playing high fantasy or whatever, they say like a sage could work for a wizard, but also for a warlock or a druid. It is just giving it a different name and giving it a different flavor. And it's the same for Stay Alive for every type of horror. So you don't need new foci. You don't need new abilities. You don't, well, there's new abilities in here, but you don't need new foci. You don't need new types, all of that stuff. You need just need to reflavor the already millions of different options that are in the Cypher System rulebook. And here it is, everybody, the PDF of Stay Alive with its insane cover. These white books, all of them all have a really, really different cover, but at the same time, they're really, they are, look really well sitting next to each other on a shelf and they really look like they're part of the same series which they are so sean k reynolds by the way a very awesome book to the artists that work for this book awesome stuff and stay alive right here is a table of contents uh quickly horror world building all of this stuff about uh there's the cypher short series and encyclopedia of horror mechanics so all types of mechanics that you can use in all types of different genres of horror there are uh horror ciphers like i said artifacts creatures npcs and then there's an entire like GM guide here for one genre and most GM guides for other games like 5th edition they are a GM guide for like playing Dungeons and Dragons as a whole but they're not like a GM guide for like one thing this is a GM guide for horror not for fantasy not for superheroes or whatever other uh, stuff so you might want to play this is horror but what I want to talk about in this PDF because there's otherwise too much to talk about is Masters of the Night, which is not only the campaign setting of this book, but it is also the campaign of this book. I said there were three cipher shorts in here. The cipher shorts are separate. There are three shorts you can play with different genres just to try out. Um, by the way, yes, there's a spirit board as a magic item uh, that you can try out in order to test the waters and see what your players like or whatever. But Masters of the Night is a vampire campaign. And I'm going to be completely straightforward with you. I have never liked vampires. I like not a Dracula kind of genre of vampires, not a Twilight genre of vampires. I've never, ever been into vampires. I don't know why, but I just never liked them. Like also the same for Dungeons and Dragons, like uh, Raven Love and stuff like. I just don't like that kind of stuff. I don't. I don't. I don't know why. But this is really, really cool. Uh, as you can see, this is chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 of the book. First of all, there is a chapter 12. Which is, sorry, chapter 13, sorry. Uh, Awakening uh, has spoiler-free information for the players written as if the characters know they are now vampires. So the characters wake up as vampires or they already are vampires or whatever. So there is this entire section on creating your character and playing a vampire and new powers and all of that stuff in a... Uh, I'm gonna say modern day setting, right? So there's modern day, but there are vampires, right? So there is this quick little thing here, creating your vampire character, follow this step. It created your character as as a human uh, with a type, a descriptor, and a focus. Um, choose your blood shifts, uh, which are on page 148, as you can see, your standard vampire abilities, uh, add your vampire abilities, versions and then uh, which your GM can also reveal later if uh, he wants to keep that he or she wants to keep that keep that a secret and then optional choose a bloodline ability which is not optional which is which is really cool stuff so you start off by building a character from the cipher system rulebook for example um, Frankie right here they say Frankie right is an intelligent vampire adept so you just use the word vampire in order to describe the fact that they're a vampire. So without um, the vampire part, they would just be a, a cipher system rulebook character called an intelli Frankie is an intelligent adept who doesn't do much. Um, so the adept is the type who doesn't do much is the is the, is the descriptor, is that the descriptor? And, uh, or the foci and intelligent is the descriptor, right? So you just add the word a vampire in there, intelligent vampire adept who doesn't do much. And suddenly now you have 
the modern day Frankie who's just dead. And the rest of this is really cool. They come with appropriate descriptors, with appropriate foci and why they are appropriate and how they are appropriate in this campaign. And that's the kind of stuff I really like about these books. So for example, doesn't do much. How is that appropriate in this campaign? You're a slacker. You've had a number of jobs in your life, but nothing really stuck. No single thing consumes you, blah, blah, blah. So there's information on that um, uh, uh, foci for you, uh, uh, partly reprinted from the Cypher System rulebook, but all confined in this thing. So it is the campaign setting and there is a lot of information here about like the campaign setting, what the players know and what they're allowed to know. Uh, so there is more stuff here that I wanted to talk about. So there's blood shifts, which is basically the same as I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but I think it's power shifts in this uh, in Claim the Sky where some of your stuff, because you are a vampire, you are you are exceptionally strong. Uh, it's the same with the superhero book. You're exceptionally strong and you get these shifts that you can choose that automatically ease certain tasks so for example if you take a shift a blood shift in accuracy all your attack rolls are east if you take that in healing you get a recovery roll extra per day if you take that in strength you get all tasks involving strength including jumping and dealing damage with melee or thrown weapons but does not uh, include attack rolls all of those are east um uh you can also take seventh which is two specific skills other than attack defense or special ability you can take stuff such as history perception and persuasion all of this stuff is automatically eased by if i'm not mistaken by one step which is just a power shift it's uh, sorry a blood shift they just reflavor the power shift id and call it a blood shift i don't know which one came for first i don't know then there's vampire gifts and bloodlines um which is by the way they talk about a vampire bite that is an ability everybody gets uh undead met metabolism is a power that everybody gets and then there is vampire gifts and bloodlines some vampires have unusual abilities above and beyond superhuman endurance and reflexes these abilities are usually called gifts or powers are the things that make vampires truly strange and human you can learn a gift in place of learning a new type of focus ability whether or not you learn any gifts is your choice some vampires learn a few some study them extensively and some learn uh learn or develop and any gifts of all gifts are grouped into categories called bloodlines and this is really cool so you can choose a bloodline you can also combine to an extent these bloodlines um so you are the animalist bloodline. Uh, bloodline gives you power over beasts, such as communicating with them, commun commanding them, summoning them. So you might have like a wolf. You might be like a vampire who has a wolf companion or something like that. You have the shadow bloodline, uh, morphing bloodline, which gives you an animal form. And all of the, the them printed in red right here are the ones that are in the Cypher System rulebook and come with the page number of the Cypher System rulebook here, right here. Now, there is a disclaimer here. Some people in my comment section are saying, and it's probably true because those people probably know it better than I do, that the, that there is a newer version of the Cypher System rulebook and some of these books were printed towards the older version, meaning that the page number aren't exactly correct anymore. I don't know if that's the, the, true with this book, um, but other than that, the, the ones in black are new ones for this book, which are stuff you can get for... From, uh, so there is, for example, the animal form is right here. It costs you three intellect like, points. Uh, this is really cool. You change into an animal of approximately your size for up to 10 minutes. And then there is a little disclaimer here. The hybrid form of the animal form ability looks strange and feral. Like classic Hollywood werewolf. Regardless of what animal is chosen, hybrid form vampires aren't pretty. So it's really cool that you as a game master can read that. Or as a player even, that it's not pretty. It's not like you turn into a wolf and you're like a pretty little wolf and everybody's like oh look what a nice beautiful no you're like ah, this is the kind of wolf that wants to like really eat you so you can choose to get like these bloodline gifts instead of taking a power when you go up a tier or spend xp in order to get like new powers you can choose these ones and you can to an extent there's rules to combine these but in general you take um if you want a tier 2 bloodline ability from Presence blood, Bloodline, you also need to have a tier 1 
basically. Uh, they talk about bloodline player intrusions, which is really cool. If you get a player intrusion, by the way, I'm assuming you know the cipher system rules. If you don't, I have a five minute video on that. But if you get a player intrusion, uh, you basically, uh, there are some IDs here for the animalist form, of, for example, an animal associated with the vampire shrugs off an attack that would kill in cap state or remove it from the area. If the attack is an ongoing effect, the animal ignores it for several rounds. Just some ideas for player intrusions. All of this stuff is mechanics for playing vampires. There's uh, hunger and blood. Uh, they talk about how if you bite somebody and drink their blood, you get an extra power shift, a blood shift. So I was talking about blood shifts earlier here, right here, blood shift. So you get another blood shift if you drink the blood of somebody and lasts, I don't know, it lasts 24 hours or something. So you drink the blood and suddenly you already had, for example, the accuracy one, but you also take the strength one. Um, for like 24 hours, you become stronger and you can really uh, do more damage and, and lift stuff and all of that stuff. So that's uh, stuff they talk about. And this is all for the players. Then there's a chapter, which is this chapter is identified for the game master only. So they talk about... Um, um, Unique mechanics of this setting that you can use as a game master in order to give people gifts at certain points. Um, I don't know the, the difference between like drinking human blood, drinking animal blood, drinking blood sub sub substitutes. Uh, look at this poor puppy. Oh man, I really don't like this poor puppy. It's going to be eaten by the by the vampire right here uh eating human food uh all of that stuff so like rules for the game master only and then they go in to um secrets of vampire they go into three adventures that are in this setting so three adventures so a mini campaign so they don't really have like this campaign setting with like there's this city here and there's this town here and there's this tavern here and all that stuff no they just go into like this is what the players know. This is what the game master knows. And here are your adventures. So you can play three adventures back to back that you can play in the setting as vampires. People who wake up as vampires. And I really like the take on that. In other um, uh, uh, white books from uh, Montecu Games, they have this setting more in a classic way. They present a setting and then they present an adventure in that setting. Here they just go like, here's what your players know. Here's what you know. Here's some interesting mechanics. Here is an adventure. Run with it. Which I think is pretty damn cool. And that's it for Stay Alive. And like always, there is much, much more to say about the contents of this book because it's 228 pages, if I'm not mistaken, of pure awesomeness, clown horror, asylum horror, zombies, undead, viruses. There's horror where the children children are the victim. There's horror where the children are like the, the heroes. Um, all kinds of weird stuff. Ciphers, artifacts, adventures, monsters. There's really interesting mechanics in here i can keep talking about this all day but i'm not gonna do that because this video would be way too long until next video bye bye